Hello, and welcome to the Be Purely Balanced podcast. I'm Dr. Crystal Couture, and today I'm here with Helen Chin Lu. Helen is a certified reflexologist, certified energy medicine practitioner, and certified Reiki practitioner and teacher in the United States. She is the owner of Healing Place and Healing Place Energy School in Medfield, Massachusetts. Helen has been practicing professional energy healing services since 2006. She has more than 1,000 specialized hours in reflexology, energy medicine, and Reiki. She is a highly skilled reflexologist with certifications in the foot, hand, ear, advanced digestive health, pediatrics, acupoint, musculoskeletal, pain management, hormonal balance, and fertility. Before becoming a holistic practitioner, Helen worked as a radio producer for WBZ in Boston. She also has more than 25 years of office management experience. When Helen isn't doing hands-on healing work, she is researching and writing to expand her knowledge. Welcome, Helen. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you for having me on your show. It's such a pleasure to have you on the show today, and I'm so excited that we are talking about reflexology. I know it's such a wonderful healing modality. Mm -hmm. Did you know it's been around for 5,000 years, give or take a 1,000 years or so? That's amazing. Yeah, and, and it's just, and it originated in China and in Egypt. And for literally thousands of years, people was, were using these modalities for healing. And somehow they all went away. I don't know how or why, but in the U.S., it started to reemerge back, I would say, in the 1930s. So it's been around, I would say, close to 100 years now. Wow. So reflexology is another one of the, the Eastern modalities, so to speak, the Eastern mm -hmm. world. And it was emerging from what I understand, it was emerging in different countries at similar times with, with some similar facets, as many of these ancient healing modalities have been. Is that correct? Yes. And, and depending on uh, which country you're from, uh, the method is, could be a little bit different, how it's applied to, to, the, to the body. Uh, the way I was taught in the U.S., we use primarily our fingers and our thumbs as part of the modality. Whereas the Far East uh, could use tools to dig away at reflex points. So mm -hmm. I just find it it's so neat, whichever way you, you whatever tool you use, it, it is just as effective. Beautiful. I love that. So since we're already into the topic of reflexology, why don't you tell us a little bit about what is reflexology? Oh, I just think it is so neat. This is, people will understand reflexology probably almost better than some of the hand, laying of the hand modality. Uh, to give you an example, at the, I'm going to use the feet because there's such thing as as you were reading off my resume, there's foot, hand, and ears. So I work primarily with the feet. At the bottom of the feet, there are 15,000 nerve endings. Every single nerve and it's attached to an organ, a gland, and tissue. So what happens if you stimulate points, precise points on the feet, it stimulates the nerve endings, the per peripheral nerves, sends messages all the way up to the central nervous system, and up to the brain. And then all of a sudden your brain is going, um, what's going on down there? Why are you doing that? And the brain will start to correct the energy and send thousands of messages to bring the body back to homeostasis. And what reflexology is primarily used for is for relaxation. And even though I have given 13,000 sessions since 2006. I find personal reflexology is much more than relaxation. Mm. It basically kickstarts the body or kick the body and say, listen, stop that already. You got to do something about this. Mm. And, and what makes it really neat about this, people usually see results within, 
I would say two to three sessions. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So reflexology is working with these specific areas, particularly the feet, the hands, and the ears because of all of the nerve endings. And therefore, because of so many nerve endings, we have access to the brain through the neural pathways, right? That's very good. Yeah. So I, I learned once when I was in my studies um, from Giovanni Masioso. I don't know if you're familiar with him. He's an Italian acupuncturist, and he's very into using the ears as a, a treatment point. And he says that the ears, the hands, the feet are like a holograph of the entire body. Mm -hmm. Because they're like this holograph, they give us access to the energetic system of the body on an even higher frequency. Yeah, and, and then once you learn more about reflexology, there's also face reflexology, there's even teeth reflexology. Mm. Um, unfortunately, when people are getting dental work done and getting their teeth pulled, every tooth is also connected to an organ or gland. There's also body reflexology. So depending on what you're comfortable in, I mean, you could hit every single component of the body depending on how deep you want to go into the session. And how do you choose which of those modality, or I should say different flavors of reflexology, which one do you choose? Let's say um, you, have a mind, you have a migraine headache chances are very good the therapist will work on your ears and do face reflexology. So mm -hmm. if you have respiratory issues or digestive issues, they might use your hands. So whatever the closest nerve endings it is to the ailment, most likely people would use the, those, um, the limbs, the hands, the feet, so forth. Mm, okay. So this idea of using the external points, using the hands, using the feet, using the ears, the face, whatever, to treat the body. Um, how was it discovered? Do you know about that? Do you know about the history of how it was discovered? Well, I know in Egypt, um, in Egypt, you know, it's a matter of just rubbing the feet. And even people today, uh, most people love to have their feet rubbed. Uh, and people always ask me, Helen, if I rub the feet, does that do anything? And the answer is yes and no. It touches everything, let's say, in your body through the nerve endings, but yet it touches nothing at the same time because reflexology is very precise. It does, it's not a matter of how hard you press. You could even use the weight of a nickel. And you know how light a nickel is, maybe less than maybe one tenth of a gram. That's all is needed is that light touch. It's a matter of can you feel where the energy imbalance are. Mm. Go there and just rest your fingers or your thumb in that area. Um, example in China, if you the people who practice reflexology there will pop your eyes out of your head because they believe more pressure, more results. So depending on which country you have studied it with, everybody's methods are the same, but the delivery is, is um, the delivery is the same, whereas the you know, method is different, but the end results is the same. Mm. So rather, it, comes, it, it comes down to rather the amount of pressure that's applied it comes down to the location of the pressure as well as the intention of both the practitioner and and the client that's correct and the person who comes um usually what i normally as i i interview everyone who is a prospective client and i just want to see how open-minded they are this is not a quick fix this is what i tell people depending on if you have a basic understanding of energy, you understand that everything is connected. If somebody comes to me and says, Helen, can you fix me? The answer is no, because a lot of the work 
I could initiate the healing, but your body is doing all of the work. And you got to go home and you still got to take care of yourself because reflexology is not an end all. If you go home and abuse yourself by eating the wrong foods, or let's say you smoke, or whatever bad habits you might have, uh, reflexology will unfortunately will not work in this case. Yeah, just just as easy as we have the potential as as humans to be our own best healer, right? Mm-hmm. From inside of ourselves, we also have the opportunity to do exactly the opposite. Um, so I, I think you're right on by, by saying it, it takes showing up, you know, it takes showing up for the session, but then it takes showing up for yourself long after the sessions. Exactly. And I'm also a true believer along with the reflexology. I also teach people, why did this energy become stagnant or block? Yes. Why all of a sudden your stomach hurt? What have you stored in your stomach emotionally that might have caused the triggers? Again, the more you understand your own personal energy flow, the more likely you'll be able to heal yourself. Yes. Yeah, that, that's right on. I, I love that you're taking it to the next level with your clients and giving them that continuity so that they can understand why the stagnance, why the stuckness, why that energy is getting trapped or not flowing or whatever the case may be in the various pathology. I think it's so important for them to understand that. And it's so important in general for us as humans to have awareness to our bodies and our energy fields so that we know, are we stuck? Yeah. And I think the most important philosophy I teach is we, as a human race, most of us, we have, we give away our healing powers to somebody else. Instead of investing and learning about yourself, you're willing to give it to a stranger who will, in the U.S., unfortunately, will give you very little time during an appointment. So right. they'd rather give you medication to camouflage or, you know, hide the symptoms, but the symptoms are still there. Here, yeah. I say, okay. The way I work with everybody is as though eventually you're not going to come back. And the day you leave, you're going to have tools in your tool bag so that you could say, okay, I remember when we discussed this and this and this, and they start to recognize the signs. Mm. And that's what's really important to me, and that's what I'm really passionate about, is educating people that everyone has the ability to do this work. No one is exempt. Yeah, that's that's beautiful, Helen. I love this idea that that nobody is exempt. I think it's a, a beautiful sentiment and a very honest sentiment at the same time. So I would just love to, we all know you've had this career as a professional radio producer, and now you're a healer. So how did you transition um, into the healing world? And also, what was your own healing journey like? What has it been like? Oh, my goodness. Well, let's start. Uh, I was a radio producer for five years back in the 80s, and it was time to start a family because I was hit, I was at that age. Okay, I'm 30 now. The clock is ticking, and it's ticking a little too fast. Mm-hmm. And once I had uh, my son, it was time to go. I made a commitment to him because I wasn't going to allow him to be raised in a situation that I didn't have, I didn't see him that much. And unfortunately, as even though I was home full time with him, he became sick. He got sick. Uh, a lot of it is genetic problems. Um, thyroid runs in my family, and the doctors did not know what to do, and nor did the doctors knew why he was sick. So. I ended up for years trying to understand what was going on with him by doing my own research and would ask doctors many questions about his diet, about why this could be. And I've learned everything on my own. And then I was telling him, have you ever considered diet? And from the, that was from the age of nine. And then at the age of 14, he started to have mental health issues. 
So back then, all it was is just a variety of medications. And we also learned what caused a lot of his brain fog. He had a gluten issue, but -hmm. the doctor knew nothing about it. And so I remember I was talking to a psychologist who was going to help us. And she said to me, Helen, I really strongly suggest you have him go get tested for, do a food intolerance test. And I'm thinking to myself, what does that have to do with brain fog and all of those things? And even to this day, even I don't remember her name and we never worked with her. That was the best advice I ever got. And when we did the uh, food intolerance test, I couldn't believe how many things he was allergic to. So mm. the food was attacking him. So years of just food restrictions and helping him to be in his body, get himself grounded. He's in a better place. Is it 100% perfect? No, because none of us are 100% perfect, even including me. I'm not 100% perfect. I still get crazy in my own thoughts, and but I know how to get out of my way, though. Yeah. And so I took this information, and I decided, you know what? I'm, gonna sh- I'm not the only one. I am going to share this. And back in 2006, uh, in the little town of Medfield, and even the surrounding towns, nobody knew what this was. And I'm like, how am I going to get, how am I going to build a practice? And everything was so incredibly new because we all were into traditional medicine. And the pill, I hate to say it like this, was our God. Mm. The next pill. And once the body is used to being on the medication, why should it have to work? Mm. You know, it doesn't remember. It's like lazy. It's like, well, you put on 40 pounds. You got to go work out now. Well, it's the same thing with your insides. You know, it's not just about fat and toning your muscle, but it's also toning your spirit mm. yeah, and your energy. Mm. So this is what I teach people every single day, how to tone your energy and get it into shape. Uh, this is the most beautiful um, way I've I've ever heard someone describe this. The idea of toning your spirit and toning your energy. I'm in love with that sentence. <laughs> yeah, but doesn't that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Because we're so used to say, "I'll wait," and say, "Wait for what?" And they say, "I don't know what I'm waiting for." Are you you waiting for someone to give you permission? Mm. Why not take the next step and be proactive with your health? Mm. Uh, This is a great point. You know, I I think that the vulnerability that you must have experienced during your son's development and as he really became quite ill, Um, into, you know, a space of more and more and more healing and also more and more understanding uh, has helped you develop in a tremendous way. Because I wasn't, I couldn't wait anymore. You know, that's what, this journey, that part of his journey was, I would say, at least 10 to 15 years of his life. Mm. That's like half of his life. Yeah. And, And to do nothing... To me, that would have been awful, you know, and I couldn't wait. And then what happens, this is what also happened. I got mixed messages. One person said this, that person said that. And then I'm going, who's right? So instead of waiting to get validation outside of me, I decided to sit quietly and talk to God. Because the validation is already inside of you. It's just a matter you trust what you hear. Uh, Helen, your the journey is is magnificent and, and it, it seems to be woven 
with the variety of, of your experiences that while they might have seemed negative at the time, have, have really created positive shifts for you. And that's, that's beautiful to witness um, from this, this perspective, you know, this, this observing point. I'm really curious during your sessions, if, if you also feel that, if you also feel similar expansion and what that's like for you and also your favorite part about being there for clients. So what do you mean by expansion? Do you, are you asking me what do I pick up? What do I sense? Um, we can go there if you want to, but I was actually thinking more about how does it help you to expand? As you were saying, toning the spirit, toning your own spirit, how, yeah. Oh, yes. Um, the biggest thing is, I, well, first of all, I'm very intuitive. I've always been on my life. In fact, I even shut it down for a portion of my life, but I've learned to use those skills once my son became sick. Mm. For the longest time, I was just too busy with my life, keeping the, the house going. And, and I, as soon as my son got sick, I started to listen to the voices in my head. Mm -hmm. And those voices were spirit guides, God, and also my soul talking to me. And one of the things about this journey that's taught me is to trust, blind trust. Like when I started my business and I was pooping in my pants because how am I going to make a business out of this? Nobody knows what this is. How am I going to be able to pay the bills? By learning to develop, trust what you feel about what is inside of you because your personal GPS will always tell you where you are, where to go, but are you willing to follow yourself? Uh, are you willing to follow your personal GPS? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, we all have a built-in GPS and trusting it is key. Does that mean that I am no longer afraid? No, I'm still afraid. But the only difference between me and somebody else, I'm willing to follow the GPS regardless if it works or not work. If it doesn't work, okay, let's try something else. Yeah. I'm not going to sit here and cry and say, why didn't that work? I feel stupid. I'm ashamed. I wasted money. Think about all the excuses we do when we something doesn't work. Why did I invest that time? I don't go there. I pick myself up and say, okay, let's go. What's the next step? Yeah. That's really powerful. You know, that's a powerful life lesson for anyone who's an entrepreneur and anyone who's looking to expand, you know, their, their own spirit, spiritual relationship. And all it is is personal growth if you allow, give yourself permission to feel and be okay with it. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. So, Helen, what would you say are three tips or tidbits that people can integrate into their daily life that you've learned or that have been gifted to you really from being a reflexologist? Well, be, you know, first of all, when I'm working on people's feet, especially new people, the feet is talking to me. And believe me, they don't have a lot of good things to say. They're complaining. <laughs> and I'm listening and I'm thinking of how can I relay this message to the person on the table without them flipping out? Because I got to be very careful. So I integrate what I pick up as part of the conversation so it doesn't threaten them. What I say, I, first thing I ask them always is, what do you want in your life? What do you really sincerely want? Not what you think you could do, because there's yeah. a difference. Because what we think we need to do is, we got to take care of the family. We got to, I don't know, I got to get to work. I got to make money, whatever the responsibility is. And then I ask them, can you stop for five minutes? And just focus on you, your breath, mm. soul, without 
thinking, thinking, I gotta do something next. Three, have the courage to make a change, a tiny change. Even if you say to yourself, I need to make a change, that's step number one, because you recognize something is uncomfortable and what whatever you're living is no longer serving you. Mm. Just by acknowledging where you are in this moment is going to take you to where you want to be. But you've got to follow through. You've got to make a change. Because all the whining, complaining will do nothing if you decide to stay a victim. Okay. So powerful. Yeah. So I, I love everybody who comes, even students. But I will kick your butt because <laughs> if, you, if this is what you sincerely want, I'm going to get you there. And you go, and what's nice about this, you go at the speed you want because you're not living on my timetable. Yeah. That's really important. And I tell them, there is nothing that you do will be wrong because it's not about judgment. It's not about shaming you. You do what's right for you. But if you do nothing, that's when you're doing the most harm. Right. Right. Yeah, doing nothing goes back to exactly what we were talking about in the beginning, mm -hmm. which is that place of being stagnant. Stagnant. And I have seen this with clients, and I, okay, I know when I interview prospective clients, I know who this is going to work for and who is not. And I try really hard, oh gosh, this is going to be a difficult one. Then I listen to the voices in my head. I hear God say, Helen, don't be an energy snob. What if you're the one that could get them to the next step? Then I said, well, God, can't they go to someone else to get, have them help them to the next step? No, Helen, they came to you. And I roll my eyes like a ping pong ball in my head. I said, all right, all right, I'll do it. And so I try to make it almost really difficult for the per easy for the person to say no, because I got to make sure they're ready to do the work. Right. And, and I'm always amazed, they'll amaze their own transformation. I have people who've been with me for 12, 13 years from when I did my clinical work with reflexology. They're still with me today. And yeah. I'm like, wow. They have made this part of their wellness plan. People go, what's a wellness plan? I know I need to eat well. I know I have to move. Yes, that's your physical plan. But what are you doing to feed your spirit every single day? And your emotional. Are you connecting your own dots? So this is where I'm really passionate when I get to see people connect the dots. Say, oh, my God, I'm not going to do that anymore. I say, well, you're developing boundaries now. Good for you. Right. Yeah, well, you're learning how to say no. Or, or, not now. Oh, not now. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> There's power sometimes in the space of not now, right? Oh, just tremendous. But, it again, it takes a lot of trust. Yeah. Well, especially if you're used to jumping, you know, jumping, what's the expression? Putting out fires and jumping through hoops. <laughs> a hard one to do. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's very true. So, Helen, I, I'm curious. This is one of my favorite questions to ask. And it's the idea of how the work that you're doing, how the work that we're doing, how the work that we're all doing impacts the collective consciousness, impacts the idea of oneness. Oh, I love that subject. I believe in my little world and your world, the two of us combined, well, we are building lighthouses. And as we increase our vibration, we are burning bright. And we become confident we don't feel that 
are we able to diminish our darkness and we could take this energy and touch other people and we just keep touching i'll touch you crystal touch 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 mm -hmm. right back at you yeah right back at you <laughs> and that's and that's our work really is to be the very best lighthouses we can each one of us can be mm. and and do my um reiki I have probably trained close to 100 people. So I have please planted 100 people, probably a lot more than that. But I know collectively, because of all the training that I've done, and they've gone and touched somebody else and so forth and so on. So that's how we are going to heal the planet. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's beautiful. One, one beacon of light, one lighthouse erecting at a time. Yes. And you can make yours any color you like. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Let's go with pink for today. <laughs> I got my pink on. I have a strawberry flavor and you have the raspberry flavor. Exactly. Exactly. So, Helen, before we close today, I would love to know if you'd be um, willing to share any um, information that's coming to you um, in general about your healing modality or an energetic transmission or anything specific like that before we close. Well, right, my energetic transmission is... I've just written a book on called Know Your Chakras. I mean, even though you can't see it, but I'll show it to you, Crystal. I'm hoping very much you got the book. Beautiful. And this is a simple and loving, but direct how to discover your energy and take it and grow the spirit within. Mm. And the more you're able to grow that spirit, the silliness won't knock you off your feet and by saying you said this to me you did this to me you'll get over that real quick because you no longer will take it personally and you're going to grow from it mm -hmm. and and the stronger your light is oh my gosh we're going to radiate to be one giant beacon mm. oh that's so beautiful mm -hmm. I love that so much. So your book is called Know Your Chakras? Yes, and you can get it on Amazon.com. And what I am planning to do, once I've covered all the expenses of my, um, everything I put into writing and making this book, I'm going to start donating. I'm gonna, I think food charities will be good. I believe in feeding people. I believe everyone should eat and everyone should have a home. Mm. Well, I'll, I'll probably get that going sooner versus later. I know my team is saying, Helen, you want, you want to start a foundation? Okay, let's get this off the ground with your, you know, the Healing Place Energy School first. Get the classes going and a live chat and all of those things. And then we'll feed people. I say, yes, it's all <laughs> about feeding people. Oh, I love that. I love how you're giving back. And it's important for all of us, no matter how how little or how much we have, that giving back is part of it. And regardless if it's monetary or yeah. in time or energy, it, it's such an important virtue. Yeah, it is. And, and even in money, you know, after a while, it's not about the money anymore. It's about can we move forward versus things you know money sometimes well this the dark side of money and the light side of money the dark side is when you become a hoarder and you're using it primarily for you or you or worse not using it and the light side of money is it's just a means to an end so if you once you touch it the next person touches it so forth and so on so you know hopefully there's good energy on the money Mm. And and this is what I've learned in my 64th year of my life, you know, is the things that we put so much importance on. Yes, it's necessary, but it's not an end all. Right, right. Yeah, and we can, of course, apply the same uh, principles to money that, that we do with our own self. And that idea of money being stagnant, money not moving. Mm -hmm is the same as it is in the body that's where disease occurs exactly and yeah. what's 
important to me. I, I know we're talking a little bit too much, but you know what? I'm enjoying this conversation. Keep it coming. <laughs> I love what's most important to me out of all the things I have. Uh, my health, joy, home, children, husband, job, purposeful work is peace. I have inner peace. And if I believe you have inner peace, you could choose just about anything because you're, you're no longer living in fear. You're not look, looking at for somebody's approval. You're moving, on, you're moving along in your life. So peace has been very important to me. Yeah. It's beautiful, beautiful virtue. Helen, I think we could keep chatting all day because I, I love our connection so much. Um, however, we sadly don't have all day. So if our listeners do want to get in touch with you, if they want to learn more about your offerings and also about your school, can you share with us the websites? Yes. Uh, go to healingplaceenergyschool.com. That's the easiest one. And I think, Crystal, you're going to be listing all my other places because Yep. You know what? There are too many of them. I can't remember all of them. <laughs> and, I, and I came up with all of them. I still can't remember all of them. It's okay. So, and just for clarification, so you're still uh, accepting one-on-one -on -one clients for reflexology and healing sessions with Reiki and that kind of thing. But in your school, tell us a little bit more about what you're doing in your school, what the teachings are in your school, because I know you're, you're reeling out those programs soon. Well, my school, as much as I love working one on one, I hear God in my head say, Well, Helen, are you ready to be seen? I remember that long conversation I had with him. <sighs> what does that mean? Are you ready to be seen globally? I'm sitting down and I'm like, Try not to sweat is coming off of my forehead. And he says to me, You're going to be talking to globally, everyone globally. I want you to develop an online school where you could teach easy to learn, non-threatening energy changes for the soul. So my school, right now I'm, I'm developing all of these classes. Um, the one that I was working on before you, our conversation was first step to your spiritual journey. What does that mean? What do you do when you start to listen, hear the voices in your head and you think you're going crazy and then all of a sudden everything in your life is uncomfortable to you and the people are irritating you everywhere and you say, oh my gosh, am I going nuts or is everybody else changing? So I'm teaching people how to recognize the steps and what to do. No, you're not crazy. Well, maybe a little bit. But then again, I'm a little bit crazy, too. And that's something I love to offer. Uh, I just wrote um, how to break out of the energy rut. We get into these energy ruts, we can't get out of it. So what happens in our head? We're spinning the same dialogue and wonder why nothing changes. Right. So those are the couple of things that I just love to teach. I have a lot more. I have so many ideas. It kind of even scares me. <laughs> you, you know, there. I love this idea that you're teaching things that are profound and they make a huge impact in people's lives the more that they practice them. But also, you're, it sounds like the way that you're teaching them is in a way that's simple enough to grasp no matter who you are. Exactly. Because yeah. it's open to anybody who has an open mind. No one, my personal philosophy, this I don't share with very many people. I truly believe no one's above us and no one is below us. I treat everybody, no matter, you know, I, I see people, unfortunately, maybe not doing well financially. I treat everyone the same. I give everyone the same respect if I can. Yeah. So, so like, the way I teach is no different than the way I'm talking to you. It's very straightforward, and and I love to hear input. Yeah. Because this is my flavor of the journey. Your flavor could be different from mine. Yeah. 
it doesn't mean yours is mine is better than yours. I don't care about any of that stuff. Yeah. It, it, it's very often that, you know, two roads can lead us to the same place. And it really does. It really yeah. does. Yeah. Uh, this is such an amazing chat. And I'm so honored that we had this time to share together today, Helen. I am too. And maybe what we could do is, hey, you get enough of a response, I will come back. <laughs> I could talk about just about anything. Oh, perfect. Well, thank you so much.